Hey everyone, Ranger William here from the Overmountain Victory National Historic Trail, bringing you another episode of the Partisans United, Patriot Leaders in the Pursuit of Patrick Ferguson. Now what we're doing with this series is we're taking a more in-depth look at the background of some of the key Patriot leaders who led their men down the Overmountain Victory Trail at the Battle of Kings Mountain. So it's October 7th, 1780. We're focusing on how these guys brought all these different skills to the table, but they cooperated together, they shared command, and made possible this great victory that they won over Patrick Ferguson and his Loyalist Army. Now, in the introduction to um, this series, we talked a little bit about where the trail is today, the 330-mile commemorative motor route, where these guys were coming from, and it was now East Tennessee, Southwest Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgians are getting involved. We talked a little bit about the different jurisdictions these guys were passing through, all these different leaders, all these different um, opportunities, the potential for uh, fighting, for squabbling, for deciding they didn't want to cooperate but they kept it together uh, for the most part. Um, on our first real episode, we talked about Isaac Shelby. I'll follow that up with John Severe. And this is going to be our third episode with William Campbell. Now, William Campbell, this is going to be our first Scott Irishman. Um, this kind of uh, almost mythical um, ethnic group that you find all across early American history. We had uh, Isaac Shelby um, with a Welsh background, John Sevier with French, and finally William Campbell. Um, now he was born in Augusta County, Virginia in 1745, making him about 35 years old at the time of this battle. Um, his parents are the ones who are the immigrants. Um, Charles Campbell, um, born in Ireland, and then his, uh, his mother, uh, last name of uh, Buchanan, um, now, William was described as being about six foot two, muscular, this red hair, and he was the first of five children and the only son in the family. So you're going to see a lot of pressure on him as he's becoming a young man to make sure that he's providing for his family. Um, in 1767, when William is 22 years old, his father is going to pass away, making him uh, legally kind of the head of his family. Um, he's going to really try to watch out for all his um, his four sisters, Elizabeth, Jane, Margaret, and Anne. And in, uh, in uh, the late 1760s, they're going to move uh, from up in the valley of Virginia, up in the Shenandoah Valley, further down to um, Aspenvale, about uh, 21 miles from... Um, about 21 miles east of Wolf Hills, which is today Abingdon, Virginia. So you see early on William Campbell and his family getting established in that area. Now he's going to jump into uh, politics pretty early on, 1773. He's going to be one of the first um, justices of the peace in Fincastle County, Virginia. He's going to be involved in Lord Dunmore's War in 1774. We talked a little bit about this in the Isaac Shelby episode, uh, where you have this Virginia-led royal governor, Lord Dunmore, this Virginia-led army, this expedition against the Shawnee Nation, other American Indian nations on their western frontier. Um, he doesn't see any action. There's only the one major battle of Point Pleasant. Um, William Campbell is not going to be involved with that, but this is his first taste, as it is for many of these frontiersmen of this kind of large military experience. Uh, 1775, when you see the American Revolution finally heat up, he is going to uh, march with a bunch of his men from Western Virginia in September to the coast, to the area around Williamsburg. And December 15th, he's going to be commissioned as a captain in the 1st Virginia Regiment by, um, by Patrick Henry. Um, and it's also while he's out there serving um, under Patrick Henry's orders that he's going to meet and marry Patrick Henry's sister in the fall of 1776 while he's out there on coastal Virginia. Um, that summer, though, July 9th, the Battle of Gwynn's Island. William Campbell is going to be involved. This is going to be one of those military clashes that kind of drives out the royal governor, drives out Lord Dunmore, who's going to take shelter on a British fleet off the coast. Um, he is going to hear about the Cherokee attacks on the frontier that summer. He's going to try and come and assist and help defend his home on the frontier. Um, he misses out on any of the big campaigns there. But 1777, you're going to see some promotions. Um, you're going to see Washington County created. Washington County, Virginia created out of Fincastle County. And William is going to be selected as the Lieutenant Colonel of Militia. Now, um, 
we want to draw a line here between Washington counties, um, just as the Continental Congress did. Um, in 1779, you're going to see that line surveyed between Virginia in North Carolina, that line drawn further west. This is the same survey where Isaac Shelby realizes, hey, he's not a Virginian, he's a North Carolinian. And you end up with Washington County, North Carolina, and Washington County, Virginia. Uh, so Isaac Shelby is going to be down in Washington County at this point in 1779 and 80. And William Campbell is going to be in Washington County, Virginia. Um, you're going to see him get this rank in April, uh, promoted to colonel, um, and you're also going to see him be very influential in leading the Patriot cause in his home district. Um, you're going to see him involved in a lot of raids, attacks, ambushes to keep the local loyalist militia from being able to organize, from being able to gather in large numbers, arm themselves, and support the British claim, uh, support the British arms, or uh, flee, escape to a British-held territory elsewhere. It's this kind of very um, vigilant action that earns him the nickname the Bloody Tyrant of Washington County. Uh, these guys, these uh, patriot leaders, they're also the, the, the law enforcement, the justices of the peace. Um, so they are able to legally pursue these guys, persecute these guys, although at times they do, they are questioned a little bit about how zealous they pursue them. This happens with William Campbell in October of 1779. There's an act of the Virginia legislature where William Campbell, amongst others, are, um, and they're exonerated for acts taken to suppress, quote, the open insurrection and conspiracy. So that is, again, all of these, um, let me move my screen here so you can see that quote. Um, you're going to see all of these uh, actions pursuing local loyalists, hanging suspected loyalists. Um, causes a little bit of question there. Now, you're going to see that summer of 1780, um, he's preparing for a military campaign, getting all these different orders. First, he's told, hey, get some supplies together to go against Shawnee Nation. Um, but then the orders change. No, you're going to go south against the Chickamauga Cherokee down in North Georgia. Then the orders change again, and he's going to go join up with Benjamin Cleveland in North Carolina, one of our leaders we're going to talk about in a future episode. Um, William Campbell is going to lead these men down into the kind of central, west central North Carolina. He's going to um, help Benjamin Cleveland suppress local Tories in that area. These loyalists, these Tories trying to cooperate with each other across uh, state borders. These Patriot leaders have to cooperate as well. Um, now, it's just after that summer that you have the Kings Mountain campaign. So William Campbell being approached by Isaac Shelby, John Sevier, told the plan. It takes a little bit of coercing to get him on board, but he and his Arthur Campbell are going to send 400 Virginians to be down and part of the Kings Mountain campaign. William Campbell is going to be the one that is uh, kind of selected to be their nominal leader, but he still wants to keep the council, keep the, um, the agreement between all their leaders, even though he's kind of chosen to be their leader. But when he returns from that campaign, you're going to see uh, January of 1781, he's going to lead a uh, campaign against the, um, uh, the, the Cherokee and the Shawnee nations. Um, and, but he is going to come back at the request of General Nathaniel Green. He's going to leave the frontier again, come back into the, the main revolution, kind of the, uh, uh, the Continental Army's field of combat. March 2nd, he arrives at General Green's camp with about 400 of his Western Virginia riflemen. Um, now, he's going to try to help support the army, use these riflemen at their best advantage. He's going to be at the Battle of uh, Battle of Guilford Courthouse. He's going to form part of the American left flank, um, but he does not like how he's treated, how his men are treated. He does not like um, serving with uh, Lieutenant Colonel um, uh, Henry Lee of uh, Light Horse Harry Lee, his cavalry. So on March 20th, Campbell resigns his commission and he takes his men and they head back to Western Virginia. Um, however, he can't stay out of the fight for very long. June 14th, 1781, he's going to be chosen by the Virginia House of Delegates to be a Brigadier General of Militia and help serve under the Marquis de Lafayette, which are, hap which are seen happen here in the summer of 1781. Lord Wallace has brought the war into the heart of Virginia, and he's attacking Richmond, Petersburg, Charlottesville. You have Bannister Tarleton and his British Legion cavalry raiding around, destroying supplies. Virginia needs to act, so they mobilize militia. They put Campbell in charge and they send him out to um, help oppose Cornwallis. Uh, 
Now, there's this great legend about Cornwallis and Campbell, where uh, Cornwallis, hearing about Kings Mountain, hearing how William Campbell was in charge of some of these guys, he says, it kind of passes an order that if William Campbell was to be captured, he was to be immediately executed. He was to be hanged. Um, and the legend is that Campbell, when he hears of this, he passes the same order, says, well, if we take Cornwallis, you hang him as well. Uh, so a bit of a legend there. Not sure about the validity of that, but it's a neat story. Um, so what you see happening is during that summer of 1781, as Campbell and his men are kind of trying to oppose the British raids, trying to push Cornwallis back towards the coast under the Maquis de Lafayette, um, Campbell takes a fever. It's not really described what the illness is. It could be a number of camp diseases, military campaign illnesses, but this is going to claim his life. And he passes on uh, August 22nd, 1781 at Rocky Mills in Hanover County, Virginia at 36 years old. Um, so you see William Campbell here, the Virginia leader. He's going to be the leader of the Overmountain Men and the Patriots at the Battle of Kings Mountain. Who knows what he could have accomplished if he had survived that summer. Uh, but sadly, he does not live long enough to even see Yorktown. And Lord Cornwallis's surrender, one of the kind of final events that his actions at King's Mountain had helped lead. So I hope you guys enjoyed learning a little more about William Campbell, learning about this Virginia leader of the Overmountain Men. Again, you can check out our other episodes about the other leaders and learn how these partisans united together, shared their experience, and made possible the victory at King's Mountain. So thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed.